Hi there! Welcome to this episode of Lights Out, your virtual campfire. I'm your hostess with the mostest ghosties, Sylvia Schultz. As an author, I get to do lots of radio interviews where I talk with many fantastic hosts, and by extension, their audiences. In this episode, I get to interview one of these hosts. Let's turn the tables and go lights out. Ron Hood is the host of Ron's Amazing Stories, a podcast for people who love stories. The podcast encompasses the best of old-time radio from days gone by, as well as the Horror Express, co-hosted by Ron with Jason Dowd. I caught up with Ron, and we talked about the passion of storytelling. Hello, and welcome to Lights Out. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. You uh, faithful listeners will remember that I like to interview people every once in a while and collect ghost stories from them. And I am about to turn the tables on one of my favorite radio show hosts, Ron Hood. Um, I have been on Ron's radio show. I've been on the uh, month of spooky three times now. And it's always, we have such fun talking. And now I get to ask him the questions and he gets to tell me the stories. So Ron, welcome to Lights Out. Thank you, Sylvia. It is a pleasure to be here. And I'd like to add that you are also on the Horror Express. That's right. Yes. We did that wonderful little sketch on the train. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that was fun. Yeah, so um, Ron does several podcasts, and we'll have the information on how you can enjoy his theatrics and his storytelling and his guest storytelling uh, a little later on. So, Ron, when I approached you about uh, telling ghost stories, you said you had a couple to share, so let's let's hear some ghost stories from you. Well, you know, let me start out by saying when I first got uh, first started my podcast, it was called Ron's Amazing Stories, and mm -hmm. I had no intention of it being anything connected with the paranormal. Really? I was thinking amazing stories like science fiction, uh, radio, old time radio, you name it. Uh, I had no idea. I know you idea. have a passion for old time radio. Yeah. Oh, I do. I love old time radio, and yeah. so. But when I got into it, what I found was, is that people love to tell me their paranormal stories. <laughs> cool. And, and so I started thinking about that and I started thinking, wow, I don't believe in the paranormal oh. <laughs> at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I really didn't. Oh. And, and I was the, I was the skeptic. I thought this is all a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> but I did enjoy watching things, you know, uh, the ghost hunters, because I uh, like shows like that, because I thought, wow, look at these guys. They're, they're full of the wool on everybody's eyes. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, this all happened until I had <laughs> my first experience that let oh, me say, <laughs> oh, my goodness, there is something strange out there. And oh, since that God, day, I, I can honestly say... I am still skeptical, but I'm That's not a skeptic. That's fine. That's so am I. I always go into an, uh, an exploration going, show me what you got. I'm keeping an open mind, but I need to be shown something. I'm going to put you on pause for half a second and remind our Lights Out listeners that this is one of my favorite things to do is ask my guests, what experience did you have that made you into – a believer or or at least let you realize that hey there's something else out there so now i get to ask this question of you well go ahead tell us about that ex tell us about <laughs> 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 what okay ron hood of ron's month of spooky and ron's amazing stories what experience did you have that made you say hey there's something to all this paranormal hogwash well, it starts out like this. You know how they, uh, you always hear ghost stories and they're always in the uh, dead of the night, dark, mm -hmm. rainy, um, or midnight or 3 a.m.? Uh -huh. <laughs> not mine. <laughs> Absolutely not mine. My story starts out like this. 
my sister uh, wanted to take her daughters to Yellowstone. Mm. Now, they have two dogs. Uh, one of them is a very shy animal, and his name is Cargo, and we're good mm. buds. So whenever <laughs> my sister would go somewhere, Cargo would come stay with me. Now, as you know, if you're a dog lover, you must mm -hmm. take your dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. It's just required. So <laughs> it just so happens that there is a park right near here where I live. And so Cargo and I, one very bright, and I'm going to say bright again. In okay. fact, the, UE, the U, uh, UV index for that day was a warning. <laughs> there was a oh, warning my. for that day. That's how bright the sun was that day. Wow. And uh, so we head to this park. Now, I have to tell you a little bit about the park beforehand. This thing has got a rather dark history. Uh, there was a uh, famous uh, serial killer that made his very first kills in this park. Blah. Uh, yeah, not good. Um, there was a, a hospital just down the road that's opposite the park, and a nurse was killed and thrown into the ravine that runs behind the park. Good heavens. So there's that. There have been uh, numerous times that they have found, um, I guess we'll call them hobos for, or mm. transients, if you will. They mm -hmm. have found them out there in the park dead. And <sighs> if that wasn't enough, there is a group that swears that there are a group of fairy that live in the back of the park Ooh. that protect it. Ooh. And so this this park has just had some incredible history. Oh, yes. Add to the fact that during World War II, it was an army base, mm. and they brought in the uh, Japanese Americans that were being going to be sent to the holding camps throughout mm. the U.S., this was a stopover spot for them. Oh, so my. during it, just terrible, terrible history. But Gosh. it's also now a nice and friendly park. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, wow. yes, they do do uh, ghost hunts in uh, down there all the time in this park. They, Sweet. It is it is one of the favorite spots of Vancouver to go uh, mm. to go into this park. Anyway, my story. Bright, yes. sunny August day. Mm. And uh, we go, we start our walking. Now, this dog is one of the most skittish animals you will find on the planet. Mm. He's kind of like fine until something pops up. Doesn't matter oh. if it's a squirrel or another human being. He's going to just freak. Oh, what kind of dog is he? Uh, Sheltie. Oh, okay. And... Uh, he and I were walking around the back side of the park where the ferry are reputed to be. And it's a nice, pleasant day. Except, you know, like I mentioned, it was quite bright. Mm -hmm. And we walked through that area with no issues. Uh, we came around to the front of the park where there is a ball diamond. Okay. And uh, actually several. There are like one, two, three, four, five of them up there. Mine. Where you can play baseball, little league, and softball. Okay. And I was coming around the corner, and he was coming around the corner, and we came to the bleachers that were facing one of these uh, ballparks. Mm -hmm. Standing in the middle of these bleachers. Now, let me clarify. When I say middle, standing in the middle, the feet were underneath the... <laughs> The uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the structure and the body was above, oh and my. it was in so complete... standing in the bleachers. That's when I say when I say <laughs> standing in the bleachers. Literally, it was standing in the bleachers, and okay. it was a shadow figure, pure and simple. Now you're saying, well, it was a bright day, Ron. It was just shadows being yeah. cast by this or that. Well. The problem was, is that the the shadows were all facing away. In other words, going the opposite direction of the, yeah. where this shadow was standing. And there was nothing there to cast it. <laughs> and there oh it my. stood. Now, here's the, here's the thing. 
the, I could plainly see the outline of the, of the thing. He was wearing some sort of hat, and if you lock me down, it was a fedora mm. and um, a trench coat. Mm. Now, sunny day, August. Why it, it, would he need a <laughs> trench coat? <laughs> and and he was a shadow. I mean, he was literally opaque. I mean, he was just wow. just standing there. <laughs> and so, and this is the bright, bright, sunny day. So I'm looking at it and then I look down at the dog and the dog is reacting to it. Ooh. The dog can see it as well. In fact, he's backing up like, I ain't going that way. <laughs> There's something there. He saw it as well. Oh, and no. I'm saying to myself, what in the world is going on here? Mm. And I'm looking at this thing. I take a couple steps forward. Now, as I do... There's this huge, uh, we'll call it a telephone pole, but in reality it's a light pole mm -hmm. that goes straight up that has lights on the top that, mm -hmm. so that they can play games at night, right? Sure. Okay. As I passed by this light post, it was on my right side. As I mm -hmm. passed by and came out the other side and looked over, the thing was gone. Mm. Just gone. It wasn't there anymore. That huh. freaked me out more because it was plainly there. And there were, if it was a person, I thought, okay, somebody lost something and they're down there looking for it. And this is all mind tricks. Mm -hmm. There was nothing there. I walked <laughs> over to the bleachers and walked up on top of them. And then it was, re I, that's when I realized that these bleachers you know, normally the bleachers have one board that you put your feet on and then you sit down on. Yeah. These had floors, solid <gasps> metal floors. Oh. So, as I told you, the body of this thing was halfway in uh, the bottom and halfway on the top. The closest <laughs> structure to this was the dugouts, to you know, okay. where the kids sit while they're waiting. And there was okay. nothing there. The next closest structure was a hundred feet away and it was a bathroom. And I thought, oh, well, the person just went to the bathroom. So mm. here I am walking around this building <laughs> waiting for somebody to come out. And I thought, this isn't creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing was in the bathroom. And I did go into the, the guy's side and there was nothing in there. No, I didn't oh. go into the the women's side. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> All right. So the next closest thing to that is a huge empty parking lot, graveled, mm. and there's nowhere to hide there. Right. So that's what I'm left with. There is absolutely no logical exp explanation for it. It was not the sun. In fact, I went back the next day and took pictures. The weather mm -hmm. was very similar the next day. I took mm -hmm. pictures and just so you so I could prove to people this is how the shadows were going that way. They weren't going towards that structure. They were going away from it. So it couldn't <laughs> have been sh shed by, you know, that light pole. Yeah. Surely it had a shadow, but it was going the other way. Oh, away man. from it. And I got to tell you that is absolutely what i saw now <laughs> i am a skeptic what do skeptics do well research mm -hmm. so i tried and tried to find out something that would explain it something that would that say to me that this is what you saw i didn't mm -hmm. find anything and then to make matters worse what i found was in the 1940s where that ball diamond is where that um, bleacher is, mm -hmm. was the bus stop for <sighs> the army base. Ah. Exactly in that spot, right there. Oh. So what I'm calling this is, is some sort of time slip. It's the only thing yeah. that makes any sense to me whatsoever is that what I was seeing is a shadow in the past and it made me wonder, what did he see? Or she? Probably he. Oh, and yeah, fedora, did I yeah. see it? Well, 
you know, yeah, I really did. <laughs> I am not making it up. I honestly saw it. And to this day, I have become a lot more open-minded. Open -minded. And those of you that are listening to me, that have listened to the podcast, know that since then I've had other things happen. And certainly uh, my uh, my other one of my other podcasts is The Horror Express, where my co-host and I, Jason uh, Dowd, talk about all things horror. And uh, so I am a lot more open to hearing stories and not just dismissing them wonderful <laughs> oh ron thank you for sharing that story with us that was amazing well ron's amazing stories what else would i expect <laughs> and and i'm telling you without any doubt that that is the game changer for me fantastic <laughs> wow so so do you um, do you go out on any investigations? Or, Absolutely or... not. No. <laughs> okay. No. I, I tell you though, I have gone on uh, back in the '90s. I did do a few Sasquatch tours. Oh, okay. And I did do that. I I uh, and I've had some success in that. I distinctly heard cries, and I distinctly heard. When we would beat on the trees with baseball bats, mm -hmm. we would hear um, return noises, similar noises. Ah, but, you I've know, heard that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it is a thing. And I did that in the 90s. Uh, okay. Quite a number of times it was kind of a thing I was in that. But I I have never put the, the whole cryptic uh, uh, animal nation into... The paranormal. I honestly think there are Sasquatch out in the, out in the forest. So I don't throw that in paranormal. Well, yeah, up there in the the Pacific Northwest where you are, there's a lot of creepy stuff in those woods. Yep. Creepy stuff in the New England woods. Creepy stuff in the Nor Pacific Northwest. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things that we don't know about that are well still hiding in the dark corners. To give you an idea, people that have never been to the Northwest. I live in like Vancouver, myself, Washington, which is just a stone's throw from Portland, Oregon, okay. literally across the Columbia River. Mm -hmm. And 30 miles from here is forest so dense that you can get lost, hopelessly lost out there. Oh. And so to say that creatures don't abound out there that we don't see is utterly ridiculous. And we're talking mm. millions of acres of forest in this area. It's just ridiculous to say that a creature couldn't hide out there if it were intelligent. Why couldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So people say that Sasquatch is paranormal. I say, you know, I have no proof. Nobody really has proof. But, hey, there you go. Yeah, I'm... I'm really on the fence about cryptids. I, I want to believe that they're out there because that would be cool. Um, but yeah, it seems to be the fashion lately to say that Sasquatch is either a ghost or a, 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 a an interdimensional being sort of thing. That's why we've never found any Sasquatch corpses because they just get sucked into another dimension. I I don't know. I think I'd rather that Sasquatch just be something out in the woods, like a bear or something. It's just perfectly normal rather than paranormal. Well, there's been a number of studies, Sylvia, that have just proven without a doubt that if you take a deer carcass yeah, and you toss it out in the woods here in the Northwest, within two mm. weeks that thing is gone. I believe it. And so to say we never find a corpse, eh. That doesn't surprise me in, in the woods out here. They don't last long. you got to find okay. them. You get about a two- to three-week window where you got to find that corpse. Yeah, and I'll and like I said, these forests are not play. You don't play around out here. There yeah. have been people in the Columbia River Gorge that have just strayed off the trail just a bit and have become hopelessly lost and killed because oh they get off the trails. It is that that important that you stay on the trails here oh because it is just within feet you can get hopelessly lost. 
<laughs> you are sending shivers down the spine of this little city girl who lives in Illinois in the prairies. <laughs> well, and I love to hike the gorge. Now, we just had recently had a very, very bad fire out here that oh, took millions of acres away from the, Col the oh. Columbia Gorge. But the trails will come back, and i yeah. got to say, it is one of the most beautiful places to hike, but you got to be smart. You gotta. Mm. You don't go out and hike these trails without making sure that you've got survival gear with you, that you can oh actually survive, and make sure that if you do get lost, that you know, you know, that you can survive. You don't. You don't play around with the gorge, and you don't play around with the Pinchot National Forest. <laughs> I love hiking and I love camping, but whoo! <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. And if you <laughs> obey the rules, you will not have a problem. It's That's the people that say, for life. <laughs> you know, oh, I want to go up on that rock up there. Uh, and then they realize that getting off the trail, just how serious the forests are here. Uh, so anyway, I don't mean to scare people, but that is <laughs> that is that is the truth. You know, the well, it forest. sounds like a place that needs to be treated with respect. Yes, and make and and, and make sure you honor the old, age old tradition of having water, food, blanket, and summoning device, something that you can make noise with, mm. so you can so you can so you can people can find you. Yeah, it used to be people would take their pistols and guns with them, but that's not really legal anymore. Yeah, well. <laughs> but you it used to be that you could fire two shots in the air saying, I need help. Yeah. And it was easier to find people back in those days. <laughs> or is it three? I can't remember. I think it's three. I think it's three, yeah. When I yeah. said that, it didn't sound right. Which would be awfully hard to do with like a muzzle loader or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Feel they did. bad for the guys way back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, that's my stories. That is so cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, Ron, please tell us again, tell our Lights Out listeners where they can hear more of your stories and your guests' stories. Well, I'll tell you what. I have made it so simple that I have just one central hub. And all you got to remember is ronsamazingstories.com. That's it. That covers it. Cool. You will get to the blog. You can get to the, the podcast. You can even find out about when we're on the radio and all of that good stuff just by going to that one simple address. Lovely. Even can get my Facebook pages and all my Twitter stuff. Roll from right there. Right on. Super. Well, Ron, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an honor and a privilege. Oh, thank you. It was lots of fun getting to ask the questions this time. I hope you enjoyed the answers as much as I did. In the next episode, we'll catch up with author Luke Naliborski and chat about his new book, Spooky with a Chance of Ghosts. Make room on your bookshelf for the next time we go Lights Out. <laughs>